Hey, what's up guys? How's it going? Um, I'm here a little bit later than my normal time for my Tuesday live here. Um, I have just been, thankfully, um, really happy, but I've been just busy with, with client meetings, which is a great problem to have. I enjoy them. I get actually, I get really carried away with them. I enjoy the art of conversation. I love talking about business and I truly enjoy solving problems. And um, it keeps me excited. It keeps me interested in what am I thinking of? What am I showing up as? What am I reading about? Where am I getting new information from? Where are my sources for inspiration? Where's all this stuff coming from? And um, in this last week, I've noticed that the, the question I'm getting a lot and that people aren't noticing is I think that people are always a little bit surprised when their own blind spots are pointed out to them. Say hey if you're here, what's going on? Um, I'm excited to jam here. I've got top five things to look out for when you're talking about your branding and understanding where your blind spots are. So this is just fresh off the press when I've been working with some of my clients um, and getting to hear and see from them firsthand um, where they're at. So tell me um, in the comments, what is a blind spot for you right now uh, as it relates to your branding? What do you think is something that you're not aware of? Um, so one thing that I wasn't aware of, uh, even being, hey, Natalie, how's it going? Um, so drop me into the comments. I uh, see people are joining in here. Uh, appreciate that. I hope you've had dinner with your family. Um, or if you don't have kids yet, you probably haven't eaten because that's normal. Um, hey, Chad, what's going on? Ray of Sunshine, thank you. I love your energy too. So the question I have for today's live is share with me, what is a blind spot in terms of your branding? What is something you just don't even know about or you don't think about? Because I'm about to share what mine was. So I had this pointed out by somebody um, who I wasn't expecting to point it out, which is the funnest way. What's up, Jenny? What's going on? What goodness are you sure? I'm giving it away, girl. I am like, the whole point of having a business for a lot of us is to be able to get to make impact in people's lives. Like, I know that sounds cheesy. I know it's been said a million times. Like, I like to help people. I really do. Like, when my clients have a win, I'm like, yeah, like doing a dance party. And I'm like, Woo, let's go. And I'm just, I am probably screaming at them <laughs> across, the, across the Zoom. But it makes it so fun because when we're kids, we celebrate everything. And then we get as adults and we start to like hold it in. And that's what I'm here for today. So the blind spot that I had is I had an image on my Facebook page, on my Facebook banner, which if you guys don't know, it's the very top image above your profile. It's actually one of the very first things people see about you. And I had a picture. I picked something of where I was um, in a position of power and I had my launch I had my launch tablecloth made and it was like the first time that I had ever presented at a conference and it was awesome. And I literally had somebody call me out on a video and be like, this person calls himself a world-class brand strategist. Uh, this is not the kind of image that's like blurry. It doesn't look like it has any graphic sense. I don't really understand this, but okay, cool. I like the rest of her content. And I was like, oh my God, like here I was at that time making people assets. I was making and designing people stuff for their page and I myself was left behind. I think it didn't matter. I thought people would like to see me in an authority position um, or at a really fun event and I was mistaken. So I'm not seeing any, uh, you guys have to share with me guys. I'm like throwing it out here. Tell me what's up. Tell me, hey Aaron, how's it going? I'm uh, curious. I want to hear what is your branding blind spot? And if you don't have a branding blind spot, <laughs> I'm going to tell you, you probably are going to get all five out of five uh, for today and what I'm sharing out. But uh, tell me where you are with, you are hitting us with the full main. Yep, got the full main going today. If you've got it, you've got to flaunt it, right? Um, so tell me where you're at in your business. Where is your blind spot in your business? I want to hear about that because I'm like, 
this is my month of clarity and there was a new moon and I'm just feeling a lot of clarity and a lot of intentions coming out. So, oh yes, Jenny is sharing out. Blind spot, I don't even know because I'm clueless on the topic. Okay, cool, cool. You can tell me a blind spot about your business. Just let, hit me up, tell me what your blind spot is and then um, hashtag me with a live if you're here watching live because um, I'm gonna use people as examples. I'm gonna get into the core. So the number one blind spot, which I just alluded to, is thinking that your image that's above your profile is not a big deal. It looks fine because you love that trip that you went on. Um, nobody looks at anyways, who cares? Or yeah, I really liked when I, um, when I put up that like two years ago and it got a lot of likes from my family and friends. So that is, okay, Natalie is saying, mm, tell me more so I can figure it out. Yeah, this is not stuff that you audit about. You think that your business page is supposed to be for business, your personal profile is supposed to be personal. And if you have an image that's on top and behind your profile image and it's blurry or it's just a random travel picture or it is too gimmicky and it has like a million logos on it. And I've actually seen this and it's, it's horrifying. And it looks like you're trying to position yourself to be much, much, much bigger than you actually are. And so here's the thing, there's a difference between marketing and then just lying. Like, you know, if you haven't been on Forbes and you were like, submitted onto like Forbes online and you wrote like a, you co-authored an article and you were like the third author on it. Like, don't claim, don't let me see Forbes up on your profile. We know, you know what I mean? Um, so don't, don't do that. Just don't do it. We know if you're on Forbes uh, and if you've been on there or not. So, uh, hey, Chris, Robinette, what's going on? I don't know what I don't know. So that's the first thing. Your image on top, if it is a rando image of something you took, on your iPhone and you think it looks cool and your friends and family have liked it, it is not serving you. I'm not saying that they're all horrible. I'm just saying that if there were, if there was two cans to vote and one was to say for you or against you, you just wouldn't get a vote. And so in that circumstance, there's also a way to craft your brand so people are guided. It's like somebody, actually a client of mine told me this today and I was like, dang, I'm gonna use that. He's like, okay, so you're telling me this is kind of like the front door of my business. And I was like, yeah, man, that's, ex yes, that is exactly what I'm telling you. It's the front door. So that's that banner page on top. So that's number one. The second thing I am like kind of horrified about, but I'm seeing a lot of it is not being really intentional with what your profile image is. Now I get you, there are a lot of people online who are coaches like, I'm starting to dress more casually too now that I've become decorporified, as I call it. I'm not, I finally am not slinging it in the office every day. But people's profile images can be very blurry, can be super dark, can have the creep factor if you're a guy and you're like looking, you know, looking to the side, you've got shadows under your eyes, we can't make eye contact with you and then you're, you have a female avatar you're trying to, to have um, within your friend circle. And then people are looking at that and kind of being like, I don't really know what this guy's about. He might be sketchy. This might be a fake profile. Or, oh my God, with women sometimes, it's like less is more concept, like too much revealed, like, you're questioning if they're, you know, serious about what they're doing or if they're just looking to date on Facebook. So you don't accidentally want to give across that impression. What you do want to do is have a picture that highlights your best features. So let me correct some things in case that I'm not being clear here. This does not mean that you have to be an influence, like an influencer. It does not mean you have to be an Instagram star. It does not mean you have to go spend money on expensive brand photography. If you have it, great, those are assets, but you don't have to have those. You just need to be able to take a pretty good picture using your iPhone or your cell phone. Does that make sense? Let me know if that makes sense. I've been putting together this training actually where I'm starting to help my clients understand what is the difference between a good picture and a bad picture 
and what body language actually says. So if you want that video, um, it's gonna be pretty short, just hit me here and just write profile video. And I'll get that over to you because that's gonna be super important. It'll be really helpful just for you to get an idea. Here's a good one, here's a bad one. So that's what a lot of my clients are struggling with. They're like, oh, okay, I see what you're saying now that you told me, what is it supposed to be? And I'm like, okay, I understand. So I understand that you have to have some examples so you have something to contrast against and something that feels more like you. Because the goal also is not to go on the other end and have like a picture from your wedding eight years ago where you were dressed up and you don't even look like that anymore. That's not the goal either. Um, our phones take such good pictures. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And especially with like Adobe Lightroom, which is one of my favorite apps out there. Um, it is really useful in order to be able to make a quick edit to your picture. So yeah, so that's the second thing. Second thing is actual profile picture. The third thing, which is also picture related, is that people don't realize that you might have photos going back all the way to like your bachelorette days. I'm guilty of this. Who's guilty of this? Who's got bachelorette pictures up? Now listen, I'm a proud woman. I feel like I looked really good in those pictures, you know, uh, skinnier, younger, all of these things. But you know what? I am at a completely different part of my life right now. And uh, those pictures are more revealing than I care to be known as. Like, I don't want people up in my bachelorette party from Las Vegas, which I didn't care about 10 years ago. So be sure that when it comes to having albums and things that are way back in the day that you prefer or you would now not want people to see, go ahead and just keep those to friends or keep those to certain friends. I have a Halloween from like 2009. Yeah, Natalie. So what did you dress up as Halloween from 2009? Because I think in 2008, 2008? Yeah, we were in Washington, D.C. And I dressed up as like a nurse. And it wasn't like a nurse, a COVID nurse right now. It was like a nurse nurse. And uh, so those pictures are probably not on my profile. If you find them, tell me because I'm going to go hide them. <laughs> so you have to do that. You have to clean that up. The fourth thing is, this is one that is like really interesting. Some people hop onto their profile, they learn about organic messaging, and they're like, all right, I'm going to like go out there, I'm going to sell my offer, I'm going to show what people, show them what I'm about, I'm going to drop a two-step, I'm going to put a value post, I'm going to post leadership stuff. And you look at their profile and you're like, man, this person is obsessed with their coaching business. This person is in love with their offer because they cannot stop talking about it. And now that is just naturally, like think about if you were to, like here's a frame, here's a frame to help it home. Your profile is just an insight into who you are as a person. So if I were to meet you at a at a wine bar, I'm not gonna say bar because I don't even go to bars anymore. That's a, that's a long, that's a who? Who was that person? That's not me anymore. Let's pretend I met you at a wine bar. We're chit-chatting, whatever. Would you, would you nonstop drop me what your business is? What you know about your business? How smart you are? How many offers you have? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? How many people know somebody who's like this? How many people know some people like it? After a while, even if I'm friends with you and I like you, I gotta snooze you. I gotta hit the I gotta hit the 30 day snooze because if you cannot stop talking about your business, I start to feel like there is no other dimensions to your character. And let's say I'm an not your avatar, I'm not who you want to sell to, but I might know somebody who would buy your offer. But if you just keep pummeling me with it, I can't handle it. I don't think you're interesting anymore. I don't think you're interesting anymore. I want you to be a human being. I want you just to be normal. I want to see pictures of your kids. I want to see you going to brunch if you still get to do that kind of stuff. Um, or I want to hear about your fails and your vulnerable moments and those kind of things. I want to remember that you're not just a walking, talking offer, right? Jenny over here is saying totally. She understands who I, she knows who I'm talking about. The people who can't get off of their offer. So that's number four. Number four is actually auditing. How much are you talking about your business? So like, 
I know some people are like, well, this is the only reason I'm on Facebook. Great. But people, we still need to know this. Haha, <laughs> you know how I feel about it. Yeah, Jill, what's up, girl? I know how you feel about this. And I also think that there is absolutely a way to be able to blend these two things together where you can show your brain and your heart and who your soul is. Like all three of those things, I want to see them all. I want to know who you are as a person. So I can say this with certainty. I do not buy anything high ticket from somebody that I don't know, like, and trust. So I always say KLT is easier to remember it and it also kind of sounds like a gang symbol, but no like trust. People can't really get to know your character if all they hear about is your business all the time. You are not your business. Jill will love this. I think you are always interesting. Oh, thank you, Jill. I love you. I gotta go watch your replay, actually. I had a group coaching call that ran over that I was a part of. And I was like, uh, 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 I gotta go, but I'm gonna go watch that. So, um, yeah, so you need to be really careful about that. Let people into your world. You're actually way more interesting, I think, than what people usually think of themselves. And I promise you, people are more interested of when you fall on your face and you mess up in business or you do something super, super embarrassing or you're vulnerable in some way and you face this enormous fear and you learned a big lesson. Vulnerability is the pathway to bonding. So whether that's with your clients, whether that's with future avatars, whether that's with prospects or whether that's with somebody you don't even know who's on your profile reading and watching what you're doing. Um, and let me tell you this, you hear, you heard it here first. It is really good feeling on the inside. It feels awesome because you are coming out there and you're literally just punching fear in the face and you're saying, this is who I am. This is what I got, like it or not, this is what you're gonna be seeing for me. I almost feel like I got into rap mode there. It was like super close, I almost took it there. Um, so that's the fourth thing. So the very, the fifth thing that's on here that I think is uh, really, really insightful when you're thinking about your branding. And I know today I just focused a lot on the profile. It's been high on my mind. I've got a lot of clients, like I mentioned earlier, um, I'm, I did this profile video for my clients so they can actually understand how they're supposed to select images because I'm seeing this gap. Um, for me, it just comes naturally because I'm a designer. So I like photography and I like the pretty things and I understand lighting and color and texture and those things matter to me. But if that's not your jam, you're like, cool, here's a picture. I think I look good. Upload. And then your mom and aunt and all these people like it. So drop me in the comments um, profile video. If you want to see that, I'll make sure somebody on my team gets back to you on that. So the very fifth thing to look out for your branding is does your brand tell your story in a way that is impactful, punchy, and attractive to your avatar? So I know that sounds like a lot of things. Um, the hardest part about branding and why I have a really successful business, quite honestly, there is so many things online that are over designed. So please, I encourage you, if you have to wait, wait, but please don't go to Fiverr and get a random logo and then come out to the world and say, this is my brand. Because it's not, you just don't know it yet. Biggest blind spot uh, is that. Thinking that your clients don't care, they do, they just picked you anyway. Um, it doesn't mean that they care. Um, it doesn't mean that they don't care. So that's the number one thing is make sure that it is it is hitting home that tells your story why you. There are so many people who do what you do out there and I'm going to I'm going to tell it like it is. You can you are probably the best. <laughs> I'm just saying that because you're watching this live. So you're my friend and I stick up for my friends like no matter what. So I believe you're the best at what you do. Um, and I believe you care about it. The thing is though, people who don't know you or don't deeply know you and they have to make a decision, have to make it based on something. And when your avatar is buying from you, they don't know that much about what you actually do. Aaron, Aaron says, mine does not, it needs to be fixed. So they don't know about you. They don't know why they should pick you 
compared to somebody else. They don't, so they're using that as an opportunity to say, hey, Sierra, what's going on, girl? Um, they use that as an opportunity to judge you. And it sucks. And I've said it before. It sucks. Like, I am not actually a superficial person. I do like to look cute sometimes. I do like to dress up. But at the end of the day, I am not a superficial. Natalie knows this. Natalie actually has helped me get my facial regimen on and has, like, helped fix me. Natalie, I need to come see you soon. Help me. Um, so, anyways, uh, yeah. So, I need to... I need to emphasize that last point home. You've got to have your story out front. It has to feel and look like you um, to some degree. The second thing is, is that it needs to have a juicy message that is really enticing to what your avatar is. And one of the coolest things that I've just learned, and it like, it like blew my mind, was the fact that you actually, you actually create your own clients. Like, Forget attracting, forget, cre forget attracting, forget magnetizing, forget um, creating opportunities for them to come and see who you are. It's not that. You're actually creating your clients. And this concept actually just completely blew my mind. And I'm like losing one word that I'm thinking of when you think about clients attracting them, getting clients, all that kind of stuff. What this does instead is it creates your client for you. They literally know what you stand for, who you are, what you freaking love doing, what you are a badass at, and then know your story behind it. So you can see really clearly when it's framed in that perspective, why? when you get your logo off of Fiverr and you slap it onto your cover and you're like, all right, that's cool, that's good, I'm successful, I got clients anyway, I'm sure you do. You just don't have more of the type of client that you can create. More of the type of client that makes you so excited that you run over on your calls. More of the type of client who when they get into your buying funnel, and all I mean by that not that you have a fancy funnel, that you just swipe it swipe once and they keep coming back for more because they like the sauce. Give them a chance to want to taste the sauce. In order to do that, your business is successful here, it could be higher. It could be better. Don't let your own blinders of not knowing what branding is, don't think it's going to affect me anyway, I've got pretty good clients. Don't let that hold you back because what you don't know will take you down in this digital marketing world because it is boom, 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 boom. And this is something I see all the time. Even the most successful people. The most successful people are actually the hardest to knock any sense into. And here's why. They're like, get on a call with them if you're lucky enough to get on a call with them. And they're like, well, I mean, this has never been a problem before. I'm making 50K a month. I'm making 60K a month. Okay, cool. What would you like to be making? Well, you know, I've kind of been stuck at this. I've been here for about like at least a couple years. I feel like I just have to keep going out there. Um, I have to keep trapping. I have to keep, you know, going after people. It, it, lead generation is difficult, but I, you know, I do hit my numbers. Okay, cool. That's fine. Where do you want to be at? Yeah, I mean, I would love to be at 100K. I mean, my clients love me. I have a freaking great offer. They know what I provide. I just need to find more people like that. Oh, okay. Okay. Is your branding helping you or is it hurting you? Uh, I mean, I'm not good at that kind of stuff. I mean, it's, it's fine. I don't know. Well, what do you think? And then the conversation starts to open up. The branding is for you, so you are pumped up on your own sauce and you walk in to now it's Zoom, right? Because we're still stuck in COVID world. You walk into that Zoom like you own the Zoom. You're like, you're Mrs. Zoom, you know, like you're just, you own Zoom. You walk in there and they can even feel the energy off of that. You're not desperate for the sale. You're not talking too much. Please, this is a giveaway on this call. Please stop talking so much on your SS calls. 
It is a lead balloon that will take you down. You do not speak on SS calls. You guide the conversation. You ask questions. You extract pain and learn before the love of God shut up on your SS calls. If I could shout some of you out who do this, I would, but I don't see y'all on here. Okay, <laughs> that's my giveaway. I just want that for the world. I just want that for the world. We would all win more. Um, all right, let me read some comments here. Okay, Natalie saying this is my blind spot. Natalie, that makes a lot of sense because you're in an aesthetic field and you're thinking, okay, well, how much do people care about my personal profile? A lot. They care a lot. They're trying to see, are you the type of person that they want to be friends with? What are some new techniques that you know about that other people don't know about? What, what is it about skincare or facials or what laser or whatever you do that differentiates you from the other friends that they have who go to other people? They are scoping you. They want to scope you out. So Jenny is saying, thanks guys. I appreciate all the comments. I love an, I love an active audience. I get like pumped up on the juice. I really do. So Jenny's saying, so my Canva logo is my blind. <laughs> oh, Jenny, what Canva logo? Have I not seen this? Have you not unveiled this on me? Or, I mean, sometimes I actually put on blinders with my friends. I just don't want to look at your logo. Some I've had people, I've had people force me to be like, go look at what I designed right now on our Zoom. It has not gone over well. Because then I've delivered the truth and then I haven't heard from them afterward. So I'm gonna have to like calm it down a little bit on 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 what that actually means. So uh, miss I miss that friend. Uh, Sierra saying, yes, your brand coaching and design significantly changed my business. Thank you, Sierra. You took that like straight to heart and it just enveloped your identity and boom, started showing up differently. Uh, you started wearing brighter clothes, which you freaking look gorgeous in. And you started to feel who you actually were just spout out of you like a fountain. Um, so excited. Love having you as a client. Uh, you know this. Uh, and love having you have a second client. Um, and I enjoy being your client too. So you can see how this works. I'm your client. No, I'm your client. No, I'm your client. So uh, Sarah is saying talking too much is an energy suck. It is. It really is. On SS calls, if you are getting lost, getting lost, trying to focus on the script, trying to write everything down, trying to look like you're in charge, you are trying too hard. It is not that hard to sell to somebody when you are good at what you do and you have value to bring. But if you want it more than they do with your energy, they immediately go, 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 boom, shut down. Like a, like a neighborhood gate just shuts down on you, all right? Calm it down. You cannot be more excited about the SS call than they are. So if you need to like go do a workout beforehand, do that. I don't need to do that because I am tired anyways with my kids. I'm not overly jazzed on the calls. Uh, Scott Barton, thanks for the tag, man. Appreciate that, Chris. Are you shouting him out or tagging him because this would help him? That's my business partner. Sierra, I love you. Sierra's like up with the questions. Uh, Jenny says, don't look. Okay, cool. I will not give you feedback, Jenny. Um, when anybody posts generally and says, what does everyone think about this? I have found myself kind of sliding in there with like the real critique. And um, sometimes it's not really welcome. So anyways, let me know if you guys have questions. Um, that's really what this is for. I covered five. There's about 15, but that would be boring. And that would be really long. And I would at least need to create something for you so you can follow along. So I mentioned at the beginning of the call, I did a profile video um, for you to, I did it for my clients. If you want to see it, let me know in the comments. Um, to recap the five blind spots in terms of branding, I'm hitting the profile home at first because that, that is like the great equalizer. It Everyone has their personal profile. First thing to look out for is your banner image. Is it serving you or is it not serving you? If you say, mm, I don't know, it's not serving you. Newsflash, it's not serving you. Uh, it's not helping you actually. It may not be hurting you, but it's not serving you. Two different things. Second thing after that was your profile image. 
if you look dark, if you look scary, if you have something from 1999 when you were like 100 pounds skinnier, it sucks, but it's not you anymore, and you're going to have to let it go. If you have your wedding picture up there and you have been married for more than a year, it's time to switch. You see what I'm saying? Conan is saying I'm taking new shots. Conan knows this. I got Aaron. Yes, you did get this one right. You're actually going to be a part of it. You're going to see yourself. You're going to be a part of my video um, that I'm shooting for my clients. I love your picture, but you did pay for brand photography, and I'm telling people it's okay not to do that. Uh, you did get that one right, Aaron. Um, so that's the second thing is like, don't look like a creepster. Don't look like you're going to take somebody out. Uh, if you're a woman, I mean, less, you know, less is not more in this instant. Like, you know, just, just get it together. Like this is not Tinder. So you don't want to show up that way. Um, you don't need to wear like a garbage bag, but like, you know, look, look nice. Uh, look straight into the camera, make sure your lighting is on point. Um, all that kind of stuff. So not too old of a picture, not where you drastically look different and all of that. The third thing from there is actually looking back at your content and making sure you are not all business, that you are also have a personality that people would, would like to talk to on a call. If they pay you high ticket, they generally have an expectation, whether it's done for you or done with you, they are going to come and see you on multiple Zoom calls whether it's group coaching, whether it's one-on-one. -on -one. That person is making an investment somewhere, somewhere, I'm gonna have to spend more time with you. Is that going to be good, bad, or in the middle? You could be in the middle, but does that do anything for you? Does that push somebody over into clicking by, saying yes, whipping out the Amex to give it to you for Stripe? Is that what it's gonna do? No, or I'm gonna say this too, are you charging a lower price because your audience expects you to be at a lower price? So think about that for a second. Are you charging a lower price because you expect that? You think you think that that's what your audience will pay for and then your audience mirrors that back and thinks that's what they should pay for you. If you are having any, any price pushbacks and they are more consistent than the one or two floozies that you didn't qualify, you need to take a look at your branding and see if you look cheaper than what your quality actually is. So you can't be coming in there looking like Walmart trying to charge Nordstrom prices. You can't do that. It doesn't work like that. They question you, okay? The only time this is okay is if you have gotten a strong referral from somebody else and that other person was like, this person made me $50,000, then you're cool. You can wear an underwear on your head and no one will care. That's a different story. So if you do have the magic pill, go for it. You do whatever you want. You're not even on this live because you've got a magic pill, not you. But for other people, if you are not getting to charge what you think you're supposed to charge, you think that you're getting the price objection more than what's fair, take a look at your branding, take that hard look and wonder. If you don't know how to take the hard look, Hit me up in Messenger. I will at least give you a thumbs up, neutral or down. I'm really honest with people. If your branding isn't that bad, I'll be like, yo, your branding doesn't look that bad. Your messaging is off. Your positioning is off. You're not positioned in the right way. So that's secondary. Um, that could be here. So Sierra is saying, don't show up like you're going to the club. You know, I kind of, well, I was going to throw out some colorful words there. And then I thought that like, I should just, you know, maybe keep it PG. I know I'm home with my kids sometimes watching these lives. Yes, the club the club was a fun time in my life. Um, that's actually where I met my husband, Cecil, was at the club. So it's really near and dear to my heart. It probably should be a part of my brand story. It's probably why I use too much color. It's probably why this lipstick is this bright with a hoodie, right? So there's a little bit of, there's a little bit of throwback to the club, I'm gonna be honest with you. And I know, Sierra, I know you love a red lipstick, so... Um, all right, Jenny saying profile video. I'll get that one out to you. Uh, Conan, I just bought clothing, <laughs> a couple couple clothing. Black shirts and hooded shirts for sales calls. It's just what works for me. Can't be looking like Walmart when you're trying to sell Nordstrom. That is right. Man, if I could just, if there was an opportunity for me just to be like you, 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 and point it out, I would love to do that. How about swimsuit pictures? Swimsuit photos. The only people swimsuit photos are okay for is if you are just so ridiculously gorgeous that 
we're all just like, wow, you know, and like, oh my God, like you're an Instagram influencer. You know, you have like 100,000 people who watch you, 200,000 people who watch you. The second thing, actually, I'll, I'll give it three. So you're just like that gorgeous. The second thing is if you're a fitness person. If you're a fitness person, it's not my favorite thing. It's not my favorite thing. I lost an earring in this. Um, you look cute. Where are those cute earrings I saw earlier? Oh, I switched them out. I'm just dropping earrings. If you're a fitness person, if you're showing off the bod, a swimsuit makes sense. It's better than you being naked. We're going to give you a swimsuit shot there. The third reason you can wear a swimsuit, and it might happen for me. If you lose so much weight that the entire world is happy for you and you're like, I did it, you get to have a swimsuit photo, okay? You have a real story. It's been a very long time since you could wear a two-piece and like this is your claim to fame back. I give you permission that you could put on that swimsuit picture on your profile. Just a couple months, just to celebrate your weight loss wins and be vulnerable where you're at, you can go for it. It was really hard to get there, all right? Um, okay, I've totally lost my train of thought. Okay, so we we're there and then, uh, yeah, totally lost my train of thought. So then just knowing your branding, uh, <laughs> you lost me in swimsuit. Branding, making sure that it is communicating the vision it's supposed to. Yes, if you are charging top tier pricing, your branding should look top tier. Don't be trying to sell something that costs $6,000 with your $300 logo. Not gonna work. Not gonna work. Meaning, doesn't mean people don't buy. It means not as many people who would buy do because you don't look the part. You must look the part. So that's another that's another piece there. So branding is an entire story of who you are so people can feel connected. It's got to be juicy and exciting for who your clients and who your avatars are. And remember, I noticed I said clients and avatars. Your current clients, Sarah, close your ears. I need Sarah to close her ears. Your current clients are literally your best buyers. They've already voted for you with their credit card. So their motion to do it again is way higher, like 80% higher. So when I say attracting and keeping people attracted in interest, it is not just your avatar. Do not discount your current clients. They are your biggest fans biggest advocates and most likely to buy from you again. Make sense? Recap number three. You were talking about uh, profile training. Yes, yeah. So I am I did a profile training for my clients just to help them understand the context of the profile image video. And actually, I am going to feature E. Aaron Cartwright because I love his image and it he did, he did a really good job with it. And I had nothing to do with it. I'm just here reporting that I liked it. Um, and Aaron knows I'm pretty honest. Sierra pulls out credit card again. Yeah, we have that tendency with each other, right? Um, so that that is so important is do not neglect your current clients and your branding and your story and you developing that and you showing your clients that you have more value to give, that you have learned. Like just remember when you started your business and you came up with your logo and you paid somebody, I don't blame you if it was cheap, that's normal. That's what normal people do. You can't spend all this money on stuff. But if you've been established for a couple years or you're making good money, you need to get to that next level and show everyone where you're actually at. Um, my dog, Nacho just came in here. He loves coming in on these lives. I don't know. He's just so little, you can't see him. Uh, all right, so um, it says, my favorite part so far, don't look like Walmart if you're charging Nordstrom price. It's gotta be in alignment. Yeah, the other thing with that too is like, your branding is uh, is, a manifestation, it's its a graphic or it's a manifestation of who you are on the inside. That isn't woo-woo stuff. That is like even my most scientific entrepreneurs. And I actually get a lot of uh, tech people. I have a lot of random tech clients. I also have coaching clients who don't have an artistic bone in their body. But within them, pulling out their identity, extracting it out, finding everything that's cool and clever and different and interesting and makes them feel passionate and fire inside. I pull that out and I blend it with what their business is as an identity. Sandwich that bad boy together and you have a brand identity that actually says the story and lasts the test of time. The last thing I wanna see is a bunch of like, I changed my name 10 times. 
I changed my logo because I didn't like it. Of course you didn't like it because it wasn't based on anything. Got to be rooted in something. Does that make sense? Let me know if that makes sense. I'm starting to realize a lot more that branding has to do with a deep identity within and us being able to work together and somebody who doesn't have your blinders on being able to see what you're freaking amazing at and being able to pull that out, hold the mirror to you and say, do you know how amazing you are at this? Like, like 5% of the people who, who, do, who are online who sell this do it as good as you do. Do you know why? No, I don't know why, whatever. Here's the parts of your story that are super relatable, you know? Um, and so that kind of helps compose what this four stories, what the full story is. Um, all right, guys, I am wrapping it up for the evening. I actually have to get some stuff done. I am actually going to be putting out a webinar soon, which I'm super excited about. Um, I haven't gotten into that stages yet, but it's time. I'm being coached uh, into doing that. So I'm going to be doing really cool webinar and figuring that out. And that's going to be super fun. So I got to go work on that tonight for my coach. Uh, but let me know if you guys have any more questions. Um, I hope this helped frame out what your actual branding blind spots might be. Um, and I also kind of wanted to touch a little bit on what the symptoms are if you're having that. Because I can completely relate to thinking, well, maybe that's not a problem for me. I need to focus on this. I need to focus on sales. I need to focus on marketing. I need to focus on my funnel. But what you don't understand is that there might be a root cause of why you're not fully excited or invested in any of it. That is like the number one symptom. If you are not fully proud to show, feeling awesome about it, something is off. And that comes through on those SS calls when it really counts. When it really counts, if you're going to get that next client who would have been a dream to work with, and they pay you what you're worth, that's where it really counts. That's when it has your back. All right. All right, guys. Thanks for joining me tonight. Appreciate it. Uh, I will talk to you guys soon. In the meantime, make sure that you are putting your best forward, best foot forward when it comes to branding, when it comes to your profile, and I want to see you winning out there. W for the win. Peace out, guys.